Yes. Well, this is encouraging. Gas fee fees, my man. Back again. Celsius is moving USDC onto the platform. Tens of millions. That's great. That's my favorite stable coin. I know people say, why don't you use Tether? I don't really trust it. Just don't. USDC, like the fact that the Alstair, Alair, I forgot the CEO's name, but he went before Congress and said, look, we're back one to one to assets, dollars, whatever you want to, you know, you can check all the different paperwork. It's all right here. Here you go. And we're all backed up and we're in compliance. So let's just move forward. I'm like, I like that. And of course, I mean, Tether did that too with a an accounting firm out of Barbados or something. Sure. I just don't trust them. That's all. Uh, beyond the bias, these are the times whole coins made. It's very true. But I think in all honesty, I think whole coiners are made not like today, like over a long range of days. And that's investing. That's just how it goes. And not like a ton. Like you can, if you're a baller, you want to put a thousand bucks in every day, go right ahead. But uh, just know that there's going to be some big, big losses. And then this was, this is my Cardano. Remember, and see, like, look at this one. In 2018, Cardano was like seven cents or 10 cents or something like that. I was buying 25 bucks like every couple of days. Imagine. And then when I went to three bucks, whoo, good days, good times, good times. Oh, those are good times. Way back when. <laughs> Let me guess, he's going to get on here and say, only investors you can lose, all because average. Tony, you must have heard my spiel many a time. That is exactly correct. I've been able to increase my Bitcoin position only 50% just the last few days. It's fantastic. Again, one Bitcoin is still equal to one Bitcoin. One Ethereum is still equal to one Ethereum. You can sell. Uh, just depends on if you want to take profits or if you are in profits. And then you have to think about, well, what about capital gains tax and all those things? Or do I just hold on to it? Everybody's different. I was talking to the gentleman today, Jason. Went on and played volleyball. Great. Good times. That's why I'm all burnt. And uh, we just talked about how there's, there's, a, there's a wide swath of people who, who listen to the channel. Some are very young people who are just like taking their stimmy checks and going, I'm blowing it on this. And, you know, that's it. But they don't have any like other massive income coming in. And sometimes they get over, overbought into the, into, the, into the market. Then some people, you know, doctors, lawyers have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, liquid money. And they buy too much, too. So it's not like just because you have an economic status or how much you make per year, you don't do you know, goofy things. Everybody has to understand where they are in life and how much they actually need as far as to pay for the basics, like your mortgage and your car and insurance and stuff like that and diapers and the kids and all those things. And then, you know, do the investment things. So uh, exactly what Tony said, exactly. My greed says, buy, my brain is like this, is not the lowest thing go. And that is a thing that we all struggle with. There's two things that we struggle with. There's two things that I struggle with. Maybe you struggle with this too. One is I'm like, this cannot be the lowest. I still think it's going to go lower around 15K. So do I just buy today or do I just wait till it goes to 15K where I think it's going to go? And that's the thing where I remember, Rob, you are not that smart. So just make sure that you uh, buy Dollar cost average, and if it goes goes up, great, everybody's happy. And if it goes back down, well, just at you know your dollar cost average on those days that you've already uh, designated, and that's it. And you don't have to you know think to yourself, oh, well, I got to do it at this point or that point or that point, because whenever I think I know exactly where the market's going, market does the exact opposite. Okay, it can easily go down to 8k at this point. We haven't even started tightening and raise of rates, and Bitcoin is already 70k. Think about all the liquidations about to happen. No one jumping in it. And again, there's the flip side. This is why I starred these comments as we were coming in because they were two, two sides of, this, of the same coin. On one, you're like, I got to buy. And the other one, it's like, but wait, we're going to do quantitative tightening. The Fed's going to come out next month. They're going to raise, raise points again. CPI numbers are going to go, probably go higher. And if you think inflation is already maxed out, maybe, maybe not. If that's true, and the Fed might will never pivot until 2023. So if that's the case, then everything will go down. And this is the problem that you have. And that is why, again, I'm not smarter than the market, so I just buy along the way, and I wait, and I'm patient, and that's it. So hopefully that helps. Ooh, hey, Jason says Bitcoin's up to 18.5K. 
see, look, there you go. And even though it went up to 18.5, that doesn't mean it doesn't go to 14K tonight. Remember that. <laughs> ah, planet raise. I don't care what the price is because 10 years could be 1 million a coin. Like Miles said, this is a good deal. That is right, planet raise. Exactly right. Ah, that's good. And then take it easy around the bottom is once Ben, Ben and you removed James from DCA show. It's on both of you. Everybody on the DCA show, there's always going to be people like you're on my channel. So you probably reasonably like what I have to say. So you identify with what I'm saying. And then on James channel, which there's a lot of overlap, honestly, uh, people love James on his channel. And then on Ben, people love Ben. When we're all three together. There's always that like, why do you hang out with that guy? Or why do you have that guy? The reason that we, I like to be with both those guys, the difference of opinion to show you where we're all going. Me and James do not agree on that stupid Bitcoin ETF. He thinks it's coming. I'm like, there's not a chance. It's a snowball chance in hell it's happening. And some other things. And a big, but that's just what it is. And that's why I can't be in an echo chamber because if I am, then I'll never improve. <laughs> that was good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a good one. Hold on. Who said this? I'll get to your question in a second. Matthew M. That's a great question. Ah, damn it. It went away. So there was somebody. Well, let me answer this question. I'm going to do some in the background. So Matt says, this is a good question. Hey, Rob, I'm heavily in I trust capital and reason to be concerned with them. Maybe have them on a show they can weather this. But you know what? That's a great, that's a great suggestion. <laughs> I'll write that down right now. Get iTrust on. So the thing with iTrust is you have to understand they're not in the goofy DeFi business. They're not here to like go into anchor protocol and then yield farm and uh, try to get this crazy 20% yield. That's not their thing. That's not where they make money. Where they make money is the transaction fees and they just have custody and they have the same custody uh, institutional grade that Coinbase uses and then Curve, which was sold to PayPal, written whatever it's called now. So for them, I don't have a problem with, with iTrust. And we're talking about, I, geez, Christmas, let me bring it up because this doesn't make any sense unless I show you. Mm -hmm. So iTrust is the Roth IRA. It's the one up here that I'm always talking about. So Roth IRA, this is how, you guys know Peter Thiel, uh, PayPal founder, billionaire investor. This is how he's going to pull out $5 billion tax-free because he put a bunch of his PayPal shares into a Roth IRA, a backdoor Roth IRA, matter of fact, and when uh, the PayPal shares weren't worth anything. And of course, they accumulated over time to over $5 billion. And because it's in a Roth IRA, when he pulls that out at 59 and a half years of age, uh, they will be worth, uh, well, a ton of money, but he will, he will pay 0.0% in capital gains tax. That's the same thing with uh, iTrust Capital. And the thing is, they used to charge 30 bucks a month plus fees. They didn't weigh with the, with the monthly fees. Now they just do a cryptocurrency transaction fee of 1%. People are like, oh, geez, 1%. But look, people got to make money somehow. So uh, that's the one. And then where is the... And then this is where I also keep my gold and silver, as a matter of fact. Uh... I will find it. Ooh, Songbird token on iTrust Capital. Interesting. And they got a bunch of different cryptos you can you can uh, get into. Ah, there it is. Security. That's it. So the same one that Sailor is using, Coinbase Custody. Ah, sorry. Let me get this out of here. It's the same one that uh, iTrust Capital is using. So I don't have a problem with that. I would have a big fat problem if they were doing uh, DeFi. I'd probably take everything out, but they're not doing that. Like they're people were doing. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, and then Bazinga X, I can't pull your, your super chat up, but this is what you asked. What are your thoughts on Chia XCH? Is it actually going up last week? Almost 20 bucks today at 30. You know, she is the same one that uh, CJ was talking to me about a long time ago. CJ Reichel. I don't have, and Bazinga, I'm sorry, but I don't have any information on Chia. 
because I don't know enough about it. Look, I'll tell you guys what I know and I'll tell you what I don't know. I don't know anything about Shia, so I can't, I can't tell you my personal opinions on that one. Sorry, Bazinga. Uh, and that's that one. And then Silicon Valley Stoic, super sticker. Fantastic. Two bucks, I will not spend it all in one place. Yeah, Ben James and Robert, the dream team. Uh, I'm going to get Celsius liquidated. Well, thanks. Uh, Kurt, none exactly. James is a good guy. You know, does his best. Oh, look, we've all lost a lot. Any fears of Bitru have trouble for the flare drop? Bitru is not on my radar. And the flare thing is definitely not. Um, but that's, I think it's the airdrop. Is that the flare airdrop that's uh, through XRP, Ripple, that type of thing for smart contracts? If that's the case, it sounds good. Ah, uh, there's Bazinga. Hey, man. Mm, I don't trust. That's good. You know what? Richard says it perfectly. Uh, here's the golden rules. One of the golden rules is treat everything as a scam until proven otherwise, and you'll be a lot happier. And even the things that I say, you can't even trust me. I look trustworthy, but I could be a huge liar. So everything that I say, double and triple check. It makes things a lot easier. Uh, don't trust people. This is true. Uh, I need some, <laughs> I hear you there. I hear you there. Uh, oh yeah, this is a great question. Rob, do you have a ledger? I have like five ledgers, matter of fact. And here's one of them right here. I got a, I think this is the X. Very nice, very sleek. But yeah, these things are awesome. Uh, some people like a Trezor. I just use ledgers and they're pretty good. And uh, that's why I've, that's why it's when you take things off of, and then that's one of the other, I got to write this down. Um, there's five rules that I need to come up. I, I have, I just need to figure out the graphics of how I put those right here. I gotta, sorry, I got to hide you, Chris. Where it says, Dan will never contact you. There's five things. Everything's a scam. No leverage. No leverage for traders. Don't use leverage. That's one of the rules. Zero to three percent on any centralized exchanges. Take profits, and then uh, just realize that whatever you invest into, it's probably already gone. You'll be a lot happier. Those are the five rules, and uh, it could help you out a lot. Yes, sell. Take profits. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. Yeah. What other dominoes could fall with three AC and Celsius going down? You see many major VCs going out. Yes. Yes, and actually I was talking to Simon Yu from StormX, and he's like, this is why they, he said, we used VCs in the beginning. He goes, we will never use VCs again. He goes, we'll do different funding. He goes, but, we'll, but these venture capitalists, they want uh, large equity, and then they cash out, and they just dump on people. And that's why we talked about this little gem over here, uh, no, this one. So look out, Avalanche, Ethereum, Kusama, Nina, Nier, Polkadot, Solana, Terra. Well, that's done. Ave, Ardana, Balancer, you can read. All these projects have a lot of unlocks coming up. And if that's the case and people need liquidity because of 3AC, then I will not hold them. That's all I can say. And that's it. Mm. Yeah, exactly. No one bets a thousand. Remember, the guy talking to you right now said that Bitcoin's going to 150k. Did that happen? No. I told you Voyager VGX was going to thirty dollars. But to be fair, I did call that one as a twenty nine cents. It did go to seven bucks, but it did not hit thirty bucks. I said Cardano was going to go to three dollars, which it did, and I thought it was going to go to five dollars, and it did not. I've been wrong. No one's perfect. That's why I just tell you like this is what I do and. You know, you make the best decision because you're probably smarter than me. Yeah. Thanks, Kermit Zafrog. No question. Just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, super sticker. 
Thanks, Bob Parr. Tell, tell Jay Powell, Jerome Powell stuff. He watches the show. I mean, I tell him every day, but he just, just got to, you know, he has to invoke Volcker and say, I'm going to get rid of inflation, which let's be honest, he's pretty much doing his job. He's just doing a little bit late. And I don't, I do the same thing. In all honesty, uh, the last Fed meeting, I would have raised it to a, a full point, rip the bandaid off and get it over with. And then that way I can be sure that, yeah, it's going to crush the economy, the Wall Street for a little bit. Those guys have been living fat for a while. They'll be okay. Crushes it for a bit. Inflation goes under control. Then instead of raising, you know, 7.5 or 0.5, I just go, you know what? 0.25. And go that way. And then people will go, oh, wow. Rob Powell just got everything under control. Just kidding. Yeah. It's a good point, Mitty. Never leave your asses on, on uh, exchange. See, sell. see, this is the thing. Like, like everybody here, you're all not tourists. You're all veterans of the game already. So like the things that I say, we just repeat it. But it is, it's good to do this again and again because even when, because here's what's going to happen. We're, we're already mentally prepared for the big dump, the big crash, and it's going to go down. Or maybe it won't, who knows. But if it does, we're there. We're like, okay, fine. That's it. I'm not going to sell because, you know, either I'm underwater or I'm just going to wait for two. I have a five-year, seven-year, 10-year outlook. I don't care. That part will be okay. The next part we have to be, start to prepare for is the next bull run because I know it's going to happen. You guys will be like me, Blake. This is what I did in 2017. I thought I was a genius and I didn't sell anything because I was accumulating. And then as time went on, all that accumulation I did, I have to start selling at some point. And it's not diamond hands. So that's the next evolution of what we need to get ready for. Right now, I think we're all ready for the big dump because you're all here. I mean, my Nick for life, sure. It could happen. I don't know, though. I don't know. Because a couple of things give me hope. I talked to some people behind the scenes and, and it seems pretty, pretty positive. And then with... Simon Dixon coming out and saying we have a restructure plan. That also seems pretty good. And I think there's other people behind the scenes looking to, because they know that in all honesty, if Celsius goes down, because 3AG is going to go down, or 3AC. So not everything can go down. I think maybe, hopefully, they'll, people will rally around them and start to, to bail something out, like how the markets should operate. Uh, they bail them out a little bit or they let them die. But if they let everything die, then it's going to be pretty bad for a little bit of time. But again, is that so bad? I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. Is that so bad? All right. If you sold your crypto on a USDC and deposit on Celsius, and now you can't get your money back from Celsius, why well, expect you to pay tax in the original sale? Here's the, sh here's the bad thing, Michael Hayes. The IRS is still going to want you to pay that back, and that's going to suck. You can claim those as losses. Unfortunately, they passed a law two years ago or three years ago, I forgot which one it was, where they said that you can only take a maximum of $3,000 loss per year. So if you lost 3,000 bucks, hey, $3,000 loss, no big deal. But if you got 150,000, 500,000, 10 million, it's going to be tough unless you get that back. So that is the thing. And that's why, yeah, I'm kicking myself because damn it. Like when I, did, I did that video on Sunday. And I, I told people it would behoove them to take all their crypto off of off of uh, Celsius. That was Sunday, like 11. And then nine hours, eight hours later, they shut off the withdrawals. I wish I would have done it at least a day before, but do you still, here's a great question. I'll say this again. You still have Celsius loan? No, they liquidated me. So, uh, but that was when I was in Europe for Coin Bureau's conference. It was a fun time. Got to meet Guy and, and the gang, a bunch of cool people from uh, Gensukishi and, and uh, Swiss board. It's good, good, good times. And when we were traveling, because we stayed there, we were in London, and then we went to Italy and France, me and the wife. And I just got kind of caught up in things, and I kept getting margin calls because that was the time when it was 
dipping again. And Ethereum, once it went to 2200, I was outside the, uh, uh, the margin, they liquidated me. And I got an email like, like I just wasn't checking. And then I was like, ah, oh, crap, I got liquidated. Well, nothing, can't cry or spilled milk. That's what it is. Told my wife and she's like, well, maybe you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it's like, yeah. But in all, in all honesty, so I get liquidated. They return the Ethereum that wasn't, didn't have to be liquidated to cover the amount that I had taken the loan out for, which was sizable. And um, I took that Ethereum, I stuck it into, I did a swap into Bitcoin, I took it off the, the platform. And that was it. And uh, now I'm looking at Ethereum at 800 bucks. So in all honesty, not too bad. <sighs> Me and Sales is right today. I will just warn you, don't get married to anybody. I mean, don't get married to any, don't get married to any investment. It's not a good look. Sell short squeeze, what do you think? There's been some rumblings on Twitter and Reddit and places where people are saying to buy the Celsius token to squeeze out all these people that are gangster style trying to shut down Celsius. And um, that could be an option. We'll see how it all plays out. I don't know. Oh, man, Harley, you're right. So it was, uh, God, it was like 90, 95 when we were playing today. And then right now it's, I don't know, 98 degrees, which is like 38 Celsius, I think. And of course I'm in here and people think, oh, that's a cool pool room, must be so nice. It's not, I mean, it looks nice, it's hot as hell, but this is my office, it's been my office for like five years. And it's like, I like being out here, but some days it's super hot, okay. Who do you think is trying to force Celsius to liquidation? Well, I would love to tell you, but I don't wanna get sued. But all I gotta say is, just look at the people, because Celsius was in an agreement, was in a preliminary agreement, potentially, to help bail out Luna. And uh, they were in talks with a bunch of other individuals, big corporations and stuff, and they said, nope, because uh, we're gonna protect our community, because that's gonna go down, we don't wanna deal with that. And then the other ones held the bag and they probably got pissed off. That's just a rumor. And I, just follow me on Twitter. You can see it all there. Uh, do you agree with Ben that alts dump after Bitcoin? I think alts have already dumped uh, a lot. They dump even harder. So if Bitcoin's if Bitcoin's dumping, usually the alts are dumping. Everything happens like Bitcoin is like everything follows the heels of Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin goes up and sits there. Then of course, like it might come. And then of course, the alts will come up a little bit. And you'll see like this, this cascade effect. And that's just how it goes. So I see alts will get hurt more so because do you really want to put your money into, I don't know, energy web token or something? I'm just saying, I don't know which one it is. Or would you just say, well, Bitcoin's been around since the beginning and uh, you know, there's a lot of institutions and uh, MicroStrategy is, is holding in. We've got uh, investment legends that really want to get into it. Wouldn't you probably just go like, that's the least risky of the riskiest asset class I want to put it into and go from there. Proof of pool never gets good. What do you think of XRP? I think XRP is going to do great as soon as they win that uh, lawsuit. Well, Ripple, and that's coming. I think, that, I think they'll win, yes. <laughs> Rob, don't you want people to ask you questions rather than trolling, James? Trolls are going to troll. That's what trolls do. I do it for the trolls. I trust Rob. Don't trust me. I could be the just another liar out there that doesn't tell you anything. Don't trust verify. But I appreciate it. Uh I have a good CPA. You're going to need one, Planet. That's good. I got a great one, too. Where is that article on Celsius? In the description. So if you, in the, in the description, it'll say today's stories. It's like number story number one right there. Oh, this is not good, Shoeless Joe. 
Rob, if I bought Bitcoin at 20K, where do you think my next buy should be on the dip? I don't even want to talk about dips anymore. What I want to talk about is um, the dynamics of the market. This is what I, I truly think. It all comes down to the Fed. Once the Fed did quantitative easing, what happened? Everything just took off, right? The stock market just went ballistic. And then, of course, the narrative was, oh, well, because they're printing so much, you know, people don't want that. They want to get into Bitcoin for the store of value play. That wasn't the case. Just that more people had more money and they put, they put it into Bitcoin. Now that we see quantitative tightening, which really is just going to start, you know, is in the early stages. When the rates go up, you, ha you have to understand uh, that affects the, the entire uh, economy uh, in, in negative ways because they have to tamper down the demand. And that's not going to stop until hopefully the end of this year. That's why I say 2022. 2022 is a wash. That's my personal opinion. Until the Fed goes, okay, we've got, as soon as they say, we've got interest rates under control and we're going to slow down on some things, that's when things take off. But until that happens, it's not going to do much. And we're going to see some sideways action and, and things like this. And of course, everything gets accelerated because everything's becoming insult. Not everything, but people, these, these, these places are becoming insolvent. Uh, like Three Arrows Capital and a bunch of other ones. So that's what it comes down to. So to answer your question, 20K, I can't tell you where. You can keep, you can keep dollar cost averaging uh, because you never know. That's what I'm going to do. But as far as like, like going heavy, 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 um, you just got to wait for, for the dynamic to change. And also another, another big thing to look out for is the gas prices. The gas companies, they are gouging us. I believe they're gouging us. There's a, there's a profit margin. So just because, just because they say, well, we need to, to, to raise prices uh, because the barrels of oil uh, increased, but they really didn't. The, the barrels of oil price didn't actually increase. It actually came down recently. So the question then is, well, why is the price of gas going up? Because they're saying, well, we have this refinery issue and, and, and we have this uh, transportation issue. I'm like, well, the refineries are still there. I don't understand. Again, I think it's just a, a little bit of a gouging. I could be wrong, but uh, just also pay attention to gas prices because once that goes, it's that'll be a good a good indicator. Ah, what do you think your chances of Celsius making it right? Ah, I can't. Let's say I'm. Cautiously optimistic that they can do things. I think if it does, if they do make it right and they do allow withdrawals, I think it won't be for some time. I don't think everything goes away. I think the money is still there, but two things. I think not all the money is there. Obviously, they must have lost something or it's, it's, uh, it's, all lo it's locked up in a certain percentage. So maybe 80%, 70, 80% is still there. And then if, they, if that is the case, then of course the time frame has to move forward because there may be some legal implications. And they say, okay, maybe in a month or two, they say, okay, now you can withdraw. Unfortunately, it's only this. And if it's Simon Dixon talking about it, and he says, well, we're going to give. The, they might do it just like they did with uh, um, Bitfinex, where they offer you offer you some kind of security token, and you can. Uh, redeem that for uh, a certain percentage. Uh, I'm not for sure, but it's probably one of those two things. Less than what you had and uh, a couple months to get it out. That's probably my best guess. Whew. James Conant is good. Who's high as a kite? But, well, that wasn't convincing, I must admit. No, I'm just super hot and super tired. James, I just told you. It's, it's a link in the description. Here. Uh, I will put... I will post the comment for you. There's a link. I just put it in there. That's the link to the Celsius article. I don't see a like or exit on there. All of you poor... 
Chris McPhee. All you poor crypto YouTubers are so underwater. It's just said, no. See, the thing was, around November, December, I wanted to get this nice property. And unfortunately, I couldn't do it without selling some crypto. So I sold a bunch of crypto. And uh, best play I've done so far. We didn't want really what I want to do, and that was it. Then also, there was a video I made about two or three months ago. It was called Sell in May and Go Away. And it took a look at the old adage from Wall Street and how correct it actually was. And it took a look over the last 70 years in multiple countries uh, for, for multiple uh, different markets. And it showed, for whatever reason, these cycles. And the cycles actually became out to be true. You sell in May and go away, and then you come back in in around October or November. And uh, that's, I sold a, a, a bunch, not a, not a ton, but enough to say I'm okay. But you have to remember, Chris, is that, let me show you this. So like Cardano, like I was buying Cardano at seven, eight, nine cents, 25 bucks a pop every couple of days for three years. And then for Ethereum, I was buying Ethereum at 100, 200, 300 for again, three years. And then for Bitcoin, I was buying everything from, unfortunately, I did buy at 10,500, 12,500, and 17,500, but not that much. But for the next three years, I was buying at 8,000, 9,000, 4,000, 5,000. So we're not all underwater. And uh, also what I did was I transferred those, that crypto and other assets, which would be land, real estate, the Amazon business, and the sports complex. So those things I've talked about on this channel for ad nauseum. And that's it. But that just goes down to take profits because you never, you don't, you, you're not going to go broke taking profits. And that's just what it comes down to. <laughs> I hear Ben got his chairs liquidated. Ben does have some nice chairs in there. Why did James never trash Cardano on your channel? Because James knows that we like Cardano. We believe in Cardano and we like what things are going. Some people hate it. They say it's a ghost chain. I got to tell you, um, don't they have a DEX? Don't they have DeFi? Going to get the stable coin rolled out? Don't they have NFTs? What's the difference? The only difference is that it's way cheaper than Ethereum. And they have metaverse plays and play to gaming. Well, cornucopias when that comes out. All right. Ah, David says it perfect. And that's, that'll be it. Guys, it's okay. Um, do a little smiling. Um, it's going to be okay. And I, trust me, I've, I feel your pain because I did this. It's the same thing in 2018 when everybody told me things were going to go to the moon diamond hands and it's going to be great forever bitcoin to a million didn't work out but what did work out is time and if you're here for a short time duration it's any your day trade i mean you can day trade if you're a short time duration i'll just leave it at that it's gonna to be tough but again if if you have an outlook like i do three five ten years it doesn't it usually looks pretty good and that's why i'll probably still be here as long as i have my voice that's it so look Thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up and uh, follow because a lot of things talk about are time sensitive and that's it for today. So thanks everybody. I do appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.